Hey guys, welcome to Meet the Collection. Uh, I'm not going to actually take this girl out of her cage, but we're going to give you a chance to meet my Southern White Lip Python female. Uh, as you can see, she is a very, very large snake. She just shed. Uh, and when I say very large, I mean for her species. Uh, she's somewhere in the eight to nine foot range. I actually shot a video with her yesterday which I may use in the future as part of a series. Um, this video is just going to be to introduce her a little bit. Uh, I don't know her age. She's a very, very reactive snake. Uh, and you'll be able to tell throughout this, there'll be changes in her tongue flicks from very rapid to very still. Um, this is still new where I'm just opening the cage door and hanging out with her for a while. Uh, and so she's getting used to that. I'm getting used to how she's handling it. Uh, right now I have the camera probably about two feet away from her and I'm about three and a half feet away. Uh, I feel like three and a half feet is a good distance for me. She's about eight to nine feet in length. So three and a half feet is well within her strike range, but it also gives me enough time to react. Um, I don't think at this distance she's going to go for me. These animals tend to be more defensive. So if I were to take too much ground, she would probably take a shot at me. But to actually come out at me is not her intention. When you saw her at the door first, uh, that was her thinking that I was going to feed. I did feed in here late last night. Uh, I still have the feeding tongs behind me, which I should have taken out of here before I even opened this door. Um, I just didn't realize they were in here until I basically hit start. Uh, and put two and two together or why she was being so reactive. These are very intelligent animals. Uh, so at this point, I think she's figured out that I'm not going to be feeding her, which is why she's backed up a little bit from where she was sitting initially. Um, like I said, I don't know her age. Given her size, she's definitely has to be over like seven years old. Uh, my guess is she's probably in her teens somewhere. Um, Supposedly, I was told she's captive bred. Her personality really doesn't strike me as captive bred. Um, that said, there's not any real scarring on her that I've seen or anything that would suggest she was brought in uh, wild as an adult. Uh, so she was either a very long-term captive from a very small animal, or she uh, was captive bred and just, uh, you know, isn't a very nice animal. Uh, what I do like is watching her right now. She's very, very curious. Uh, this has come a long way. What you're looking at right now is 18 months worth of work with this animal. Actually, longer. I think we're at like 22 months at this point uh, that she's been here. Uh, and this, this is huge progress that I'm able to do this. Uh, but you can still see, you know, she's not entirely comfortable with this situation. Now, I'm standing up which does put me at a somewhat more threatening angle. But also, if I were to crouch down and get on her level, uh, that gives her an advantage that I really don't want her to have right now. Uh, these snakes are very fast, very agile. Uh, if she did decide that she wanted to come for me, it's gonna take a lot for me to get out of the way and uh, get into a position to you know, handle her appropriately. Uh, and that's not, you know, me trying to sell you on, you know, this is more dangerous or anything like that. These snakes are very accurate strikers. They're very fast. Uh, they're very intelligent. They definitely want to go for your face. They have no real interest in coming after your uh, arms or legs or anything like that, typically. Not saying that they won't bite those things if those are what are available. Uh, but they typically want to look you in the eyes and, and square you up that way. Uh, which is also mostly just a defense mechanism. Uh, predators are most dangerous with their mouth uh, in most cases. And so these animals are smart enough to know that that's really what they want to neutralize. Um, she is not very fond of the hook. So one of the things that I've been working on with her is putting the hook near her to where she can see it and knows that it's there, but I'm not trying to actually touch her with it and threaten her with it. But you can see her posture immediately changed, her demeanor immediately changed. Uh, you can tell that she is thinking about striking at the hook, uh, which she does on a fairly regular basis. 
Uh, I don't know what happened with her and hooks previously to her being here, but I have never seen an animal that hates hooks so much. Now, in an ideal world, if it was just a hook issue, I would use my hands with her, but she, she hates me too. Um, I think she may hate the hook a little bit more, but she hates me enough to do a lot of damage. And so uh, I would like to work with her with the hook and get her to accept the fact that it's not here to hurt her. Uh, and that's something with an older animal that's going to take a lot of time. Uh, but I'm willing to put the time in because she's a beautiful animal. And my hope and plan was to breed her with my male southern white lip that you've seen. Uh, but he is nowhere near as big as she is. Uh, and as reactive as she is, I have huge concerns that uh, she would make a move on him and try to kill him. Uh, especially if he moved and flashed by her. Um, She's known at times to actually strike her water. If I walk in the room and the water shakes too much and the reflection of the light catches in there, um, she's definitely, she's definitely thinking about going for that hook. I just moved it though. Um, so yeah, so with the water, she's definitely uh, on several occasions taking shots at the water dish. She's actually bitten the side over there next to her head. I don't want to invoke a strike out of her. That's not my goal. Um, that means that I've kind of failed with this interaction if she gets to the point where she feels like she needs to defend herself like that. Um, if you're watching closely, you can see the way she's tucking her tail in. It's a very classic defensive maneuver to get her body kind of under her head because that's her ultimate defense is her head. Also, sometimes they'll get their tail into position because these snakes will musk as well. Um, she doesn't musk very often but mainly because I don't put her into positions where she feels like she has to. Um, my male musks a lot more, but he also doesn't strike. Um, so that's what he prefers for his defense mechanism. She prefers to strike, uh, for sure. Uh, she uh, doesn't want to mess around. She doesn't want to waste time with the secondary stuff. She wants to come out with the teeth and uh, make her presence felt. Now you can see she's relaxing a little bit, but she's still weary. Um, if I move the hook right now, she's probably going to come back to that, you know, more classic position. You know, we'll see what happens. I, I, like I said, I don't want to elicit a strike. But you can see right away she's coming back to position because now that she's seen the hook there and she knows it's around, she wants to be ready. Uh, definitely a beautiful animal. Definitely one I'm looking forward to. Uh, you know, I would love to someday be able to just take her out of her cage and handle her. Uh, I don't need to handle her for long periods of time. I don't need to sit on the couch and hang out with her. But it would be nice to just be able to coax her out of her cage, you know, move her into a holding bin without, uh, you know, a military coup or something like you would need now. Um, but progress is progress. And the fact that I can sit here and talk like this and stand three feet away from her and not have her overly defensive is, is really, really kind of neat and fun. Um... This was an animal that, you know, a year ago, if I even turned the light on in this room, she was smashing her face off the glass. Uh, when I went to unlock the lock, she was biting the locks. Um, she actually bit the lock so bad she undid one of the, the nuts on the back of the lock that holds it in place one day. Um, she was attacking the water. She's bitten herself on several occasions, just getting so ramped up that her own tail moving by her, you know, triggered her. Um, one of the things that I mentioned that video I did yesterday that I've done to kind of uh, calm her down is slowly drop her temperature some too. Um, down about four degrees, I believe, or so from where I started with her. And where I started was, you know, supposed to be in their ideal range as far as hot spot goes versus ambient. But, you know, working so much with bloods and short tails and knowing how much temperature affects their personality... Uh, I decided to try a little bit and still keep her within her range, but just kind of back it down a little bit. And I backed it down a degree here and then a half a degree and a degree and just slowly tweaking. And this is where I found where she's really settled quite a bit at this temperature. She's still eating great, shedding perfect. Um, she's still very alert, very active, still defensive. Um, but she's more open to interaction and, and stuff like we're doing right now. Uh, so that's a big part of keeping is just kind of learning your individual animals and being willing to accept the fact that just because things are perfect by what the book says doesn't mean that you may not need to tweak things a little bit for an individual animal to make them more comfortable. 
Um, just like, you know, room temperature is comfortable to most people, it may not be to some. Um, and there's a lot we don't know about these animals, you know. We don't know if they have issues, you know. Certain people have, say, a thyroid problem that makes them cold all the time or something that makes them hot all the time. These animals could have issues like that that we're not aware of. Huh, just a little jaw realignment there. I don't know if that means she's getting ready or if she feels like she's more settled. <laughs> Either way, I don't want to find out. Um, but she is, like I said, she's a, a, just a beautiful animal. I'm really excited to have her. And as much as she hates me, I love her. Um, I'm going to try to get her outside this summer again for some pictures. I took her out once last year. Um, I took her out in her shift box. I took the top off the shift box. She was outside for 45 minutes to an hour. She wouldn't come out of the shift box. And the funny thing was, even though the top was off of it, she would only poke her head out through the hole in the shift box. Just goes to show you how much they're creatures of habit. She's used to that's her in and out, and that's how she looks out from that. So even though she could have just picked her head up and looked out the top or, you know, whatever, she still opted to use what she was used to. Um, so that was a really neat thing to see and kind of one of those, those things where, you know, you realize how much they become creatures of habit. Um, but yeah, she, uh, she's not used to being out of her cage, so obviously being outside was like a total shock to her. She wasn't scared or panicking or anything, but she just had no interest in going out and exploring. She just wanted to stay where she was comfortable. Uh, but this year I'm hoping to do it maybe two or three times and by the second or third time see if she's uh, going to be a little bit more interested. So for now we're going to shut this and lock these doors back up. And like I said, sometimes she's real reactive to the lock turning. Sometimes she's all right. You can see she's definitely paying attention to it, but she's gotten better. Knock on wood, she hasn't struck the glass um, in maybe close to a month now. It's been a while. So I'm going to cut this short. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed seeing her. I'm sorry it's not the most exhilarating footage, but I'm not going to encourage her to strike just because people think it's cool. Uh, that's counterproductive to what I'm trying to do with this animal, which is earn her trust. Uh, and it's not easy to earn trust of a, of a very savvy, older animal. Um, so this is a lot more work than working with a hatchling or a lot more work than, you know, working with some other species. It's an intelligent animal that, you know, doesn't trust people for whatever reason. So there's a lot of work ahead, but hopefully six months, a year from now, uh, we'll shoot a video with her and it'll be super exciting. Stay safe out there. We'll see you guys.